Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com uh, checking out an S&S &S funeral car. This is on a LaSalle chassis, it's a 1939. Uh, John is in from uh, uh, Ontario. He just got here. I've got to get this interior before he uh, goes upstairs and relaxes a little bit. Oh, John! Look at this woodwork. We did some. Did some relaxing. This is just beautiful. Yeah, I'm shooting a video, so don't say anything dirty, please. <laughs> that always gets some smiling. The details on these cars are just absolutely remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Now I've got to check out the outside. This, as beautiful as that inside is, this is all carved wood. This is the way they used to build funeral coaches. It's of course the takeoff from the wagons, but look at that. That intricacy in the carvings. Here you'll get the full exposure with the doors closed. What a line. What a line. Just beautifully done. Now this is, uh, you can really see the detail here. Again, this is all carved wood. Now check this out. But you did notice the hinges there, the way how they blend in so perfectly. This is the left side door. This is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com, the 2016 Professional Car Convention in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Again, checking out 1939 S&S. Based off of a LaSalle. For more cool events like this, make sure you check NortheastWheelsEvents.com, SoutheastWheelsEvents.com, and UKWheelsEvents.com. Uh, okay, so you have a three way door, and now you redid, you were just saying about redoing this interior that this is one sheet. Piece of walnut veneer. Right. And then you had to rubber it out and you had to bleach out the lighter spots and cut the centers out so the material would fit into the centers. Uh-huh. So it's all copied off the original. And then we had to redo the board underneath the table. It's like a three-way Y so that the table track will work on it. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so if you go either way, uh, one of the three ways, right, right. out the back, the sides, left or right. Oh my gosh, and mechanical. And then we had to rebuild the table. The table was, well, it had been exposed to the element, so it was rotten. Mm -hmm. So we went to a fellow in Durham that has a woodworking shop, and he said it's all North Carolina, North, North Carolina poplar. Right. So he ordered in 300 board feet of North Carolina poplar. Oh, jeez. And then he milled it to match. It's all notched to the original. Wow. Would you uh, show me the uh, photo of the uh, car when you first got it? See, the side doors were laying inside the car because it's all wood framed underneath and the wood posts were gone. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. The back door was hanging down because the wood was rotted. Now all the wood carving was all there though, On correct? The outside? That's On the outside? That's all wood. That's all cast aluminum. Oh, that's cast aluminum. Yeah. And they were all there, thank goodness. This is what it looks like before you put the paint on them. Oh, that's gorgeous. Wow. I thought that was uh, wood carving. I'm glad I uh, yeah. spoke well, to you on that. In 1936, they made wooden carved ones. Right. In 1939, they, they used cast wood. And this was originally built for a funeral home in Toronto, Ontario. Uh-huh. And used there uh, until 52 or 53. Mm -hmm. And it was sold to a funeral home north of Toronto, a little, city, a little country funeral home. Right. They used it till 59, and that went to a scrap here. And a fellow, oh, uh, he was a retired Toronto police officer, and he hot rodded Cadillacs. So they used to phone him up and say his name was Duke Deadman. Uh -huh. Oh, perfect. And so he, they used to, the scrap dealers used to phone him up and say, hey, Duke, you want another hearse? We have one. So he said he owned 13 at one point. Jeez. 
but he died, but he never got to see it finished. I'm surprised he didn't hot rod it. No, he didn't hot rod the horses, he just mostly did coops, he said. Oh, okay. But he passed away in 2008. Yeah. Wow. We didn't get it back in the road until 2009. We kept oh sending gosh. pictures. Uh huh. We never got to see it finished. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. This is a magnificent piece. Absolutely magnificent. I love it. Well, I'm definitely going to be splicing this in between correcting the uh, thing. Any other features that you'd like to uh, point out? Um, it was on. Uh, they said owned by 12 funeral homes in Toronto. Right. Only in 1939 they were called Kill Burial Company. This must have been extremely this, expensive it, when it was new. That's the original nameplates hmm. off the door. Those are supposed to be mounted on the outside of the doors. Right. After we got the car painted, we didn't want to have it done. But Mr. Troll ordered his cars all different. In 1939, 90% of the cars had wine interior. Right. He always ordered his in gold. He ordered it with chrome rollers, uh -huh. not rubber rollers. He has not so, registered their car or registered themselves, and has not received their judging placard or judging sheet. You may now go to the registration table to receive that information just under the portico here to my right. Now that's, that's the way to get the word out at a professional car meet. I love it. That's Elmo. This is what he calls his coat. <laughs> oh, that is something else. That's an s, &S Fleetwood for all of you all. Sure, that's you know, beautiful. How much was this car new? Do you know? We don't know. Yeah. But we have a picture out of the funeral magazine from 1939. Mm -hmm. And the end load one only was $2,500. So this Jeez. is a three-way, so we don't know. Somewhere. Oh, my there. gosh. Yeah, that's one expensive proposition because back then, yeah, back then you're talking about uh, normal cars under a thousand dollars. Charles ordered, or they started their second funeral home in, in Young Street, Toronto, and they were ordered this car for the second funeral. Home. Hmm. Beautiful, John. This is quite a treat. I thank you very much. Oh, those sweat bees are driving us crazy, absolutely crazy. Well, enjoy the convention. And we'll see you guys probably at the museum. Enjoy the museum tomorrow. Uh, we hope so. And if you happen to be around here, once we get it all cleaned out and everything, I can pull the table right up. Friday night they're having a car show here. Ah, very good. So, uh, I don't know where they're having it. They're having, they've invited some of the local cruise guys to come in with their cars too. Cool. So, we'll have it open and everything. I'll be in. I'll have it cleaned up. By the, we drove through rain and mud and everything else yesterday. So. Oh, she looks good. How was it driving this car? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Once you get it moving, it weighs three ton. Oh. So from the stop sign, it takes a little bit to get moving. But once you get it rolling, it just rolls along. Uh-huh. So. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And of course, it's got the flathead Cadillac 8. Yes. Yeah, very good. Three-speed, do you have overdrive? Nope. No. So it's, well, if 50 mile an hour is fast enough, because when you're driving three ton and you no man and no power brakes, yeah. no power steering, you want to be able to stop it. Oh, that's it. That's it. This must be geared pretty low also. I don't know, it just runs along at 50 without any problems. So. Sounds good. John, I thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a great day. I'll see you Friday. Hopefully.